and we're in the breeder lab today. That's actually kind of cool because I, our main focus in the breeder lab right now is egg scatterers. And we're kind of trying to work out how basically the simplest and versus the best way to do egg scatterers because Egg scatterers are kind of the backbone for a lot of uh, breeders award programs and local aquarium clubs. So we're working on a couple different strategies. And so these are all small, either schooling or shoaling fish that just kind of scatter their eggs. And so the idea is how much effort do you need to get to get your BAP points? In most of the aquarium clubs around here, you need to raise six fry to about the two month mark to be able to back them, you know, trade them in for points. So how much effort do you need to make in order to do that? I don't know, but we're trying to find out. So this is the simplest method we're working with right now. These are literally just bare bottom sponge filtered tanks with a single spawning muff. And both of these tanks are in two different stages. This bottom tank had a group of a dozen Serpe Tetras, and this top tank has this uh, group of, I think it's half a dozen Madagascar rainbows. So the Serpe Tetras were pulled out about a week ago, and I haven't seen any fry. I'm going to give them a few more days, but I'm given the impression that this didn't work. I have an inkling of why that didn't work. And I don't think it was the fish, and I don't think it was diet. I think it had to do with the setup itself. So if this doesn't work, I'm gonna say that this is too simple, and I think there are a couple different problems that may be happening here. Uh, my first inkling is that these mops aren't really down, they're kind of loose. And for these non-adhesive eggs, that might mean that they're just it's too easy for the mop to move and the eggs to just get exposed. So if this doesn't work as well, what I'm gonna do is then I'm gonna produce a bunch of mops for this one so that there's a complete coverage at the bottom just to increase coverage to see if that's the problem. And in this one, the strategy I'm gonna have is I'm just gonna weigh it down so that the mop is stuck in one spot. So stay tuned for updates on that. This is definitely a uh, work in progress and we'll see how that goes. But we have a couple different other strategies that we're working on at the rack over there. So let's pop over there and see what we got. All right, we're over here now. We went so far. So this tank right here is actually more or less kind of just an iteration of that stuff over there. It's just a much larger mop. I'm trying to do a couple different variations of the same riff here. Uh, I'm very curious to see how this goes out. I don't have a lot to say about this one. What I do have a lot to say about is these two tanks. So in this tank, I have female checkerboard barbs and Odessa barbs conditioning, meaning getting nice and fat. And over in this one, I have males of the same species conditioning. So I'm most familiar with separating and then bringing together chosen pairs of bars. So, and over here, we're gonna do that in two and a half. So right now they're just in conditioning, but when we actually get ready to spawn them, uh, we'll film that, don't worry. But we haven't, uh, behind the scenes, we've been talking about whether that produces a higher yield or not. So we're gonna take this and kind of compare them. Ben and I have talked about maybe having a little competition where he does a group of checkerboard barbs like this and compares them to the results of like these separated out pairs. I don't know. We'll just see how it pans out. I'm kind of just giving you guys like a, this section right here is very much a preview of things to come. These are projects that are a little bit on the back burner as I'm working on these more at this current time, this figuring out how to make this bare bones thing work best is the main focus of the breeder lab right now, at least with the egg scatters. And so stay tuned for that too. I have basically the most complex version of how to do this down below. And there are ways to make it prettier and there are ways not to. At this point, it's meant to just look like a stepped up, souped up version of this. And I'd like to talk about that next. Are 
are you ready? <laughs> I got distracted because I'm pretty sure both of these males are holding eggs. So we're gonna ignore this tank for the video. That's for another day. Have fun with that uh, short preview. But these two tanks at the ends are both egg scattering species. And these are slight variations. So this is egg scatterers with live plants. And if we have in this one here with the white clouds is this big mass of java moss. And this is a tried and true method for uh, several people who work here and has actually worked pretty well multiple different times in our retail tanks. So if you've heard about accidental breeding in the store, uh, it's basically the retail tanks where we had a bunch of egg scattering species and then we sold them all at once and then we didn't immediately fill the tank and the fry just showed up. So that was actually kind of the inspiration for uh, how to do these experiments with egg scatterers because we were like, these are kind of complex tanks as in like heavily planted, yada, yada, yada. So what's the like, how, what's the most easily replicated and simple version of that? And so right here we have uh, all this java moss, as I mentioned, and in here it's a bunch of Anubias. Uh, that idea was inspired by, we actually had a group of uh, Picto rainbows breed in a tank that had a bunch of Anubias in it. So I'm curious if that can work with a couple different other species of egg scatter, or if that was just like an offshoot thing, like a one-off thing with rainbows because they have slightly adhesive eggs. So was it just they were capable of like sticking just enough that they were hidden or was it just something else? I don't know. So uh, in here we have Chopra Daniels and these are just white clouds. These are tried and true uh, egg scatterers. Let's just, you know, see what happens. So I hope this was a little insightful of what we're working on right now at the time of filming. Uh, we're very clearly working with a couple different strategies and just kind of seeing how it goes. But I feel like I would love to hear what other people are working on, what strategies have worked for them, what strategies haven't worked. Uh, the more people get in on this conversation, the more useful it is for new people trying it out. And that's really the value of like an aquarium club with the breeders program because you have all these people who are trying these strategies and they have these monthly meetings where everyone gets together and uh, afterwards everyone's just talking about what they're doing in their fish room. It's a lot of fun. Variations of this strategy are really useful for egg scatterers in general and I think a lot of people are surprised with how common egg scatterers in the hobby. So like zebra danios, uh, basically any species of danio, uh, most species of tetras, most species of barbs, or etc. etc. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Basically every shoaling and schooling fish in the hobby is an egg scatterer. So at least some variations of these strategies will work for a lot of these fish. We're just trying to figure out, like kind of quantify at least in some almost scientific sense what works in what ways. So let's see how it goes. If you'd like a better uh, overview on what exactly a spawning mop is, how to use it and how to make one, Check out our video on that that we released a few months ago, and that's gonna be very informative. Also, our podcast has a lot of really deep dives into breeding specific species of fish, uh, just because uh, Ben, Amy, and myself, we have different experiences with breeding fish. Uh, we've never, like, I've never bred a buffalo heads, and Amy has, so her experience is vastly different from mine. Uh, so those kind of deep dives are more useful there. But, this is, this is a lot of ground to cover, so if you have any questions, I 100% believe I left some people in the dark about some things, so please comment below, uh, ask any questions you have, message us on Facebook or Instagram, email the store, and just we'll try our best to answer those in the capacity within our experiences, and get out there and try to breed something. It's really cool, it's a lot of fun. Uh, my philosophy on it is, wow, I really like this fish. I'd like more of them to be in the world. And it, it doesn't need to be more complicated uh, like reasoning than that. So until next time, have lots of fun and keep those hands wet.